Hey there everybody, it's Mecha Draco coming to you with another video, and in today's video we're going to talk about Uber. Specifically what we're going to be talking about today um, with Uber is we're going to be talking about an accident that they had uh, on Monday with their self-driving cars. As you may or may not know, Uber's actually been frontlining the, the advancement of self-driving cars for quite some time now, probably for the last two years. Uh, they actually have a fleet now of self-driving cars up in Pittsburgh, and they've actually had an incidences two times now where one of the self-driving cars was involved with an accident. However, from what we've been seeing so far, both incidences were not at fault of the Uber driver or the vehicle itself, but of the other individual who was involved with the accident. So this was neither at fault to the driver of the Uber or at fault of the vehicle, the self-driving vehicle. This is more at the fault of the other individual driving the other vehicle. Specifically, what we're going to be going over is we're going to be going over another accident that occurred with Uber's self-driving cars. So let's go to that article now. So as you can see here on the article, we've got it from Tribe Live up here now. I don't entirely know who Tribe Live is. Uh, obviously, as you guys probably know by now, there's a lot of news sites starting to pop up on the internet. Not that there already weren't a lot to begin with, but... Lots and lots of internet sites have been popping up, but this seems like something that there's really no reason to believe that they would lie about or anything else along those lines. Please, of course, check sources and other things like that before when you go looking at sites like these. But I have no real legitimate reason to believe any kind of fault on this particular article, so I'm going to go ahead and read it out to you. Um, to start off with, let's go ahead and read the title. Uber's fleet of self-driving cars in Pittsburgh are back on the road after Southside crash. Apparently, there was an accident now on South Side in Pittsburgh, and apparently there they did actually have an accident. And, of course, in response to an accident like this, because they want to make sure that there was no probable fault to their self-driving vehicles, they shut down all of, their, all of their vehicles for about 48 hours or something like 24 to 48 hours to ensure that there was no fault of theirs. And, of course, afterwards, they reactivate them. So let's go ahead and read the rest of the article just so we can get an idea of what's going on. Uber grounded its fleet of self-driving cars in Pittsburgh for a few hours Monday morning as the company investigated a crash involving one of its vehicles. Few details regarding Uber's move to ground its fleet and the company's decision to put it back on the road are available. Mind you, like I said before, it seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. It's kind of like an experimental thing that they're doing. They're trying to make sure there was no fault of the vehicle itself. They're trying to make sure that if there was any fault of the vehicle, compensation can be given out, you know, so on and so forth. So the fact that they put it back on makes me believe that more than likely they're just something they, they've determined that there was no fault of the vehicle, which I think we can conclude is the case. We conclude our internal investigation of into this morning's incident and have resumed our self-driving testing and passenger operations in Pittsburgh, an Uber spokesman told the Tribune um, Review. The spokesman said there was no serious injuries and the only Uber employee employees were in the self-driving SUV at the time of the crash. So no, wait, no, there was no even passengers or anything else like that um, in, in the self-driving car at the time. Uh, the crash happened at 8.14 a.m. near the intersection of Sydney and Hot Metal Street on the south side, according to Pittsburgh Public Safety Spokeswoman Sonia Toller. Toller confirmed that no one was injured and said the driver of the Uber Volvo XC90 was in full control of the SUV at the time of the crash. So that means that the actual self-driving vehicle itself was not actually driving the car. Now, that could just be them saying that just to sort of, you know, get get out of the way so that way they can say that, of course, it wasn't at fault of the self-driving car. I, I don't try to say that, try to protect them, but at the same time, though, I have no reason to believe that they would be lying about this situation. The idea in the long run, though, is that they do specifically state here that the vehicle was not at fault or that the vehicle itself was not at fault. It was, in fact, the driver or more specifically, they were saying that the actual self-driving vehicle, part of the vehicle, was not active at the time of the accident, so it had no operations in or no interaction or involvement with the accident. A black Nissan Sentra was driving west on Sydney Street when it collided with Uber's SUV, which had been traveling south on Hot Metal Street. Toller did not say if police had determined who was at fault for the crash, 
Both vehicles were towed from the scene. Um, then it goes on to say, like, Uber's fleet returned to the streets at 11 a.m., and the company spokeswoman said, so this, this company spokeswoman said, uh, Chris Scorazone drove by the scene shortly after the crash happened. He said neither car had extensive damage, and he compared it to a fender bender. Scorazone said it appeared to him that the Nissan tried to make a left turn in front of the Uber vehicle, which to me sounds like that might be the fault of the Nissan, not the Uber driver, so who knows. Scorezone also said he noticed that the tow truck called to carry away the SUV had an Uber sticker in the windshield, similar to the ones regular Uber drivers put inside their windshield. Scorezone wondered if Uber has its own fleet of tow trucks to service its self-driving vehicles. I've actually worked with tow trucks before. I've actually worked with um, roadside assistance and stuff like that. I can pretty much guarantee you I know exactly what it is. It's probably just a normal, everyday tow truck company that just has a contract with uber that's normally how they work we there's usually very few tow truck fleets for anything because it doesn't work very well that way because there's too many tow truck companies just all over the place so it's better and just easier to just contract with companies like tow, tow truck companies to do towing for you you call them up you're they're your preferred and then you call them up and they come and do work for you so, and that's how it essentially works with roads and assistance. I imagine that's probably how it works with Uber. Um, Uber grounded its fleet nationwide for about 48 hours in March after a self-driving Uber vehicle was involved in a crash in Tempe, Arizona. Police determined the Uber was not at fault in that crash. Uber last week celebrated the one-year anniversary of its self-driving car pilot program in Pittsburgh. The company, whose advanced technology group is based in Pittsburgh, reported that it's more than 200 self-driving vehicles in Pittsburgh. Tempe and San Francisco have driven more than 1 million miles and have provided more than 30,000 rides to customers, which is really awesome. And I believe right now the how the pilot works is that they still involve a driver in the Uber vehicle itself, but they also have the self-driving uh, part of the vehicle as well. So they can turn on the self-driving if the customer prefers or if the customer would like to um, or if they would prefer there be just a normal manual driver, then the individual can just drive the vehicle itself, which is, you know, I think very, very interesting and a very good way to handle it because that way the customer's preference is taken care of and that way everyone is happy and they also still get to test the self-driving vehicle. My guess is also the Uber pilot probably has to actually... I'm going to call him a pilot because it kind of makes sense that way. Probably has to actually activate the self-driving part of the vehicle like every once in a while just to be on the safe side so that way they can get testing done. So what does this mean for self-driving cars? I don't know entirely. See, the thing is, is that self-driving cars are something that I really, really actually want to see. I don't care about flying cars so much. I don't care about hover vehicles. I don't care about all this other stuff like that. What I care about is self-driving cars. I can't stand driving. I hate driving. I absolutely think it's probably one of the most annoying things to do because I know how to drive and nobody else on the road seems to. So it annoys the shit out of me when I'm driving down the road and I'm stuck behind somebody going 10 miles under the speed limit or I'm stuck behind a whole bunch of people who just won't pass people like they're supposed to or just doesn't stay in the left lane or the right, yeah, they're on the right lane like they're supposed to. They get over to the left lane and they just sit in it, even though they're going slower than everybody else. Or they don't take the turns when they're supposed to, or they don't get in the lane that they're supposed to, but right like before they're actually supposed to get there. Or they actually, you know, so many problems with normal people driving because of impatience, because of just bad skills when it comes to learn, like driving himself, just everything. I, I can't stand it. I would do anything to just have a car that drove itself everywhere. I would just turn it on and just be like, I'm done, and just sit back and enjoy the drive. I'd be more willing to drive long distances. I'd be more willing to drive to more places on more regular basis. I I would love it because that's what I like. And this is the kind of thing that pay I want to pay attention to because I want to see the progression of self-driving cars. And this is important to me. This is something that I think is really important to the world because I think we could actually really try to start to remove a lot of incidences of accidents and other problems like that with self-driving cars. A lot of people fear things like hacking and other things like that, 
but that is yet to become a problem, and hopefully it's, it maintains that. I don't know how it's all going to work. I don't know how it all will end up being, and I have faith that we won't be facing any major problems. But at the same time, though, there's always problems that comes with everything, and this is the reason why we want to have this type of investigation, why we want to have this type of analysis of our of of these types of things. We want to make sure who's at fault, why is it, why is it at fault, what happened, why did it go wrong? If it went wrong, was it at fault of the self-driving vehicle? And if it was, what can we do to fix it? How do we fix it? Because this is something that I think we are going to start seeing. And I don't think that we're going to see this in, in a broad sense of every vehicle on the road is going to be like this. But I do see this possibility of Uber vehicles, for example, being a regular thing where they are self-driving. Taxi services, other things like that, where we can call up a car, it comes, drives to our house, picks us up, and takes us where we want to go. Not so much of our own vehicles are going to be self-driving. Not that they we won't have them. I mean, they have that one um, Rolls-Royce, I believe. Rolls-Royce has a really nice self-driving car, and I can't even begin to imagine how much money that is, how much money it is for one of those things. But Because it's a Rolls-Royce for one, and it's self-driving, so Lord only knows. But the idea is that it's a, it's a pretty cool-looking car. Regardless, though... I want you guys' comments and feelings on this particular subject. Let me know what you think. Do you think self-driving cars are something that we want to see in the future? Do you think we should maybe just keep it to taxi services? Do you think maybe everybody should get a self-driving car at some point? Or what? Or maybe you think that we should just completely get rid of self-driving cars. Just get rid of them completely and just not even worry about them. And just continue with, with the way it is normally. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked the video, go on and hit the like button. If you really liked it, go on and hit that share button. And if you haven't already and you loved it, go on and hit that subscribe button. And of course, as always, guys, good luck out there. Don't forget to have fun.